I deny the enemy access into my life, my ministry, my marriage, my finances, my education, my health, and family. In the name of Jesus, I take control over my atmosphere and saturate it with the blood of Jesus. Now listen to me, earth, sky, and sea. I bring every power under subjection. I take authority over the big and small waters, the rocks, the trees, the earth, the wind, the moon, the stars, the sun. I take authority over witches, occultic altars, astral projections, and the underworld. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my father, my fighter, arise and defend my cause. I block the enemy and deny him access. Any man or woman who has determined to harass my life, in the name of Jesus, may their lives be harassed. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 59. You have seen the wrong they have done to me, my judge and my father. I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus and I decree and I declare anybody that the enemy has assigned to harass your life by tender and by fire, may their life be harassed in the name of Jesus. Psalm 55 verse 9. Confuse them, Lord, and frustrate their plan. For I see violence and conflict in the city. May my enemy dissolve like slime, like a stillborn child who will never see the sun. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, let death stop my enemies. Let the grave swallow them alive. For evil makes its home within them. I silence the mouth of every accuser. Any meeting going on, whether physically or spiritually, I overthrow their conference table and scatter the agenda. Lord, you have heard the veil names they call me. My enemies whisper and mutter as they plan against me all day long. Look at them, whether they sit or stand. I am the object of their mocking song. Lord, pay them back for all the evil they have done. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11 When a crime is not punished quickly People feel it is safe To do wrong I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus Anybody My God that has purpose to do me wrong Today I decree By the power in the hey, blood of Jesus Lord bless May every, one every of you. plan They have scattered in the name of Jesus Azubaru Agadosh my father, my fighter, reward my foe according to their works. I decree and the Lord declare you this that morning. the Lord will fight your battle yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Acts 23, yeah. verse 2. Now, the Lord richly bless you this morning and um, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, to, to tune in this morning. I want us to lift up our hands and I want us to um, bless the name of the Lord. Come on, join with me this morning. Can we? Come on, lift up your voice with me. Father, we want to give you praise. We want to give you honor this morning. We bless your majestic name for who you are, for what you've done, and for what you are yet to do. Awesome God, be magnified. Prince of Peace, be magnified. Ancient of Days, be magnified. We bow our knees, we lay our crowns, and we declare that you alone are God. Have your way in our lives today. Have your way in our home in our marriages, in our businesses, in our ministries. Have your way in our families. Let your name and your name alone be exalted. A million thanks this morning for waking us up. It is just by your grace. We did not wake ourselves up. No alarm clock woke us up. It is just by your grace. Therefore, Father, we are saying thank you because we are grateful. Father, now I pray that you gather your people by your spirit from the four corners of the earth. And Father, do us good. Speak to us. And may your name alone be lifted up in our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you this morning. Um, Maxine, Maxine, Maxine. Whatever the issue may be, Maxine, I lift up prayer for you. May the Heavenly Father... Um, lift up his right hand of authority over your life and destiny and may the Lord turn things around for your favor in Jesus name. Now we are going straight into the word of the Lord. We've been dealing with um, the, um, the, um, um, the book of Acts chapter 3 and um, something just popped up again and I really want us to take a look into it this morning and um, I believe that it will be a blessing to you and to those that you know are watching with you um, the other day I learned something that when I'm on live and then you share me whilst I'm on live those that are on your page or your whatever can also watch me live it's kind of interesting it's kind of cool 
And so I, I learned that the other day. And so the Lord bless. We are going straight. Good morning, Pearl. Good morning, my darling. Good morning. Kukua. Kukua. Amen. 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 Oh, Bishop Halmerton Saba. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Um, the Lord bless. Now, we are going in to look into um, the word of the living God this morning. And uh, I pray that the word, uh, you will allow the word to have its free course in your spirit, soul and body. You will allow, you will allow the word to have its free course in you. Open your Bible with me um, to the book of Acts chapter 3. Um, there is one verse, one, you know, that I want us to take a look at. But of course, I'll read the whole thing. But there is, I just want to take one and we are going to um, work on it this morning to the glory of the living God. Amen. And so let's do that. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb. Oh God. A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Adimi Aparagadia, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Oh, Wilma, hello, honey. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an arm. And Peter fastened his eyes on, upon him uh, with John and said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, Maliba Zomahade, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him, and immediately, ah, he took him by the right hand and lifted him. Now, if if you are reading your Bible, I know I know the Bible is yours. And so underline that or or lipstick it, eyeshadow it. Okay, put something there. Uh, verse 7. And he took him by the right hand mm, and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bone received strength. And he leaping, um, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them and entered with them into the house, into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Verse 9, and all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew, and they knew, and they knew. I want you to underline that word again uh, in your Bible, um, Acts chapter 3, verse 10. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder. Ah, they were filled with wonder. A queer good morning. Good morning. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. Look at the key word they filled. They were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Verse 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John and, and, and all the people ran together unto them in the port that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering, wondering. They were wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power? Oh, Badima, as though by our own power or holiness. Mm. We had have, we have made this man to walk. You are looking at us as if by our own power or holiness. And so that is the reason why I have a problem. Well, when God uses somebody to do something and they walk around with a chip on their shoulder, I did it. I, 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 I. Well, Peter and John says, why are you looking at us as if we did anything? We did not do jack. Look at it with me. He says, though by our own power or holiness, we have made this man to walk. The God of Abraham, in other words, we did not do jack. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was, was, he was determined 
to let him go. Now, he's saying that, now, now let me just, I want to jump on one particular verse, but, but let me say something here. Now, uh, Peter says, now, why are you looking at us as if we did something? And so when, when um, you know, uh, when you, you see people that God allows them or God grace them for them to do something and they have a chip on their shoulder and they are going around like they did anything, please have mercy on them, have pity on them and begin to pray for them because now ego is now working as See, they did something. My darling, you did not do jack. And so please, give, be quiet, give the glory to God, and find a seat and sit down. Now, we are going straight into the word of the Lord. Good morning, happy. Oh, I like your name. Is your, is your name happy? Really, is your name happy? Wow. I like that. Happy. Happy. Wow, happy. Because I'm happy. <laughs> happy. Now, Let's look at something here. I want to zero in on verse 2. That is where we are centering our message today. The verse 2. It says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask arm of them that entered into the temple. Now, I, let me read it from the New Living Translation. He says, ah, verse 2, here we go. He says, as they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day, he was put beside the temple gate, the one called beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. So he could beg from the people going into the temple. Ah, now, I, I, I believe the young man was saying that, well, I, I know you've heard my story. Um, I, I know you've heard it, okay? Now, first, you heard that, I mean, you knew that I was lame. Now, all of a sudden, I have become, I have become well. And so you heard it. Well, the story you heard was true. Hmm. I'm getting warm up. The story you heard was very true, but but I want to I want to give you an update of the story. Uh, now you know um, <laughs> I want to give you an update of the story. Well, you heard that I was lame. You heard that I was broke. You heard that I was begging. You heard that I was suffering. You heard that I was homeless. You heard that I was childless. But that was what you heard. I want to give you an update. My God, the young man said. Now you had yeah you we, you knew that I was lame and I couldn't walk but but you know now you see me in the temple and you are wondering what happened to him what I mean the, the people were filled with wonder he says well once you know there's a song we sing amazing grace how sweet the sound uh, that saved a wretch like me I was once lost I was once uh, it it is it is not the same story I was once lost but now I am found I was blind but now I can see. I was. I was. And so they are looking for you at the beggar's lane. They are looking for you at the place where people will give you a handout. That is where they are looking for you at. But but they will come back there and you will not be there. You will not be there because your address. Oh, Labado. Your address have changed. God is about to change somebody's address. I hope you are listening. Jehovah is about to change somebody's address. Somebody's destiny is about to be changed somebody's wardrobe is about to be changed somebody's crown and yes they took your real crown and they they gave you a fake crown but your original crown is coming back in the name of Jesus my God they were laughing at you but now they cannot laugh any longer now Job said uh, when the elderly when the people that have wisdom when the gray hair when they saw me they saw the problem I was going through they saw the mess I was in and so they closed their mouth they put their hand on their mouth. They could not speak. But this time, it will not be the case of Job. This time, it will be that because they see what God has done in your life, they will have no choice but to put their hands on their mouth because they cannot explain the blessings of God, the favor of God, the provision of God, the protection of God. They cannot explain it. They cannot explain it. When people can explain what you have it is not God listen to me somebody put it there when people can explain what you have it's not coming from God oh Jesus somebody tweet that for me 
when people can explain what you have, they can explain your riches, they can explain the favor, then it's not of God. Because the God that you and I serve, he does things that nobody can explain. It is unexplainable. You can't, you can't explain. You'll be dumbfounded because your little brain cannot, cannot comprehend that which God. Oh, I have started the preaching, you know, that which God, their little brain cannot comprehend. Isn't, isn't that the woman that, that they are saying that, that will never have a husband? Isn't that that young man we put a block on and we said this man can never travel? This woman can never travel. And so they are in their homes and they are saying, ah, you're trying to sue. This woman, this man can never come back. Now all of a sudden, they see a car and the car is parked. And they, they are, the, the, the same person that did that is asking, who is that? Whose car is that? My God, what kind of a car is this? And they say, ah, ah, it is the young man that, 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 that we said will never come back home. It is the young man that we said will, will never make it. The young man has returned. And then the same person that did that to you will see you and say, ah, are you, are you the same person? We thought you would never come back. We thought you would never make it. We thought, listen, their thoughts are not God's thoughts and their ways are never God's way. Listen to me. I came to encourage somebody this morning. Look at something with me. Three o'clock this morning, my God, I was wild awake. And my spirit is not at rest at all. And I'm trying my best. I mean, I pray a little bit. I'm trying my best to take a nap. And the more I put myself on the bed, the more my spirit is jumping all over the place in prayer. And so I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. Literally the whole night, I've been up the whole night. Now, whilst I am studying, the Holy Ghost is giving me tips. <laughs> and I'm writing them down. He says, the young man is saying, I don't deny the fact. I was once lame. I don't deny the fact. You know, sometimes when, when, when people want to bring you to your past, yeah, they want to bring you to where you used to be. And so, and so they, they make statements like, I remember when she was poor. <laughs> I remember when she was lonely. You want to bring me back to my past. But you see, I am not dwelling in my past. I have moved forward. Oh God, because I serve a God who knows how to move his people forward. Oh, and so yeah, I know her past. Oh, I know his past. He, she, she was the one that was begging. She was, she was the one that was homeless. She was the one that didn't have. She was the one that didn't have that one. And she didn't have that one. Well, but the story is changed. And you know, your enemies are so envious that every given time, they want to take you back to the past because it gives them some kind of energy when they can bring you to the past and make you feel very small. Oh, Oh, and they, uh, they, they, yeah, they, they, they have a kick out of it. They have a kick out of it. You know what? The people heard the rumor. They heard it. Oh, and there are rumors going all around. They heard the rumor. They heard the rumor that this young man was born lame. They heard it. Yes, they heard it. And some of them did not only hear, but they saw it. They saw that the man was lame. Well, you heard the rumor, but let me give you an update of what God has done. <laughs> there are a whole bunch of you who are going to give your enemies update. They are too late. They are too late. Your enemies are too late. You are going to give them an update of what Jehovah has done in your life. They think that, well, oh, that was yesterday. Oh, man, don't mind. Don't mind him. Don't mind her. Ah, she, she's, she's pretending. She's pretending that everything is okay. Oh, come closer. Come closer. Because I have to give you an update. The update is this. I was once broke but today the Lord has turned my destiny around I was once useless but he has made me useful in the kingdom oh God I was not useful to you but he has made me useful to others oh Jesus now this is the God we serve <laughs> this is the kind of God you and I are serving the young man 
the people that carried him, that is where I want to talk to you about. The people that carried him. The people that carried him. The young man's case was so... Uh, I don't even know the words to use. I mean, his case was so somehow relevant and irrelevant uh, to, to, to the extent that his name was not even given to us. Now, you know that a name is what identifies. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Your name is what identifies you. But if you have no name, and sometimes your problem is so bad that people have forgotten about your name, and now they are addressing you by the problem you are facing. They have completely forgotten about your name. And so somebody is asking, oh, I, I am looking, I am looking for, um, for Edith. Okay, I am looking for Edith. And then they are going in your neighborhood. Do you know anybody in this neighborhood called Edith? I am looking, I don't know the address. I don't know the person's name, um, I, mean, I mean, address. So I am looking for somebody by the name Edith. Now somebody comes out and says, ah, uh, there's nobody in this neighborhood called Edith. Then another person will come and say, oh, you know that woman who doesn't have children? I'm uh, um, two blocks from us. I think her name, <laughs> that woman who don't have children, that woman who is useless, that woman who is a harlot, that woman who is a prostitute that woman who is jobless no she lives two doors from us and i think i think i believe they're not even sure i believe her name is edith and so you go there and you said you knock on the door i'm looking for edith and then they said oh well she used to live here oh my god she she used to live here but she's not here anymore where can i find edith because i know that this was her address and 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 i was sent to this address and so they come there they are looking for you we are uh, knock, 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 knock. Who is there? It's it, it's me. Me who? It, it's it's Ankarato. Okay, Ankarato, what is the issue? I am looking for Edith. Edith? Uh, yeah, I was told she lives here. Uh, Edith? Oh! She used to live here, but she's not here anymore. Ah, uh, um, uh, Satan thought that he has crucified Jesus and that he's in the grave. And, and, and you know, they set men, watchmen, to go and stay by the grave and to make sure that, that the disciples will not come and pick him up and go out there and spread that he's risen. And so they set men there. Oh, but on the third day, when they came back, ah, when Mary Madeline came back, when they came back, Jesus was nowhere to be found. Uh, he, and, but at least, you know what he did? He left an evidence. He left an evidence. I am telling you this morning, you will leave an evidence. My God, my God, my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one I have depended on and never had never put me to shame. This same God will give you an evidence. Jehovah Sabaoth will give you an evidence. Jehovah Mekedesh will give you an evidence. God will give you an evidence. They will come to that place. That place is an evidence. But when they come there, they will not find you. They said, oh, she used to live here, but she's no more here. Wow, she's no more here. Where can I find her? I am looking for that woman. And the one you met in the house said, why? He says, because I, I have heard that God had made her a mother of children. I, we all thought that she was pregnant. We knew she was pregnant, but I have heard. I, I, and so I came to verify it myself and to know if what I heard was true. And so it says, well, <laughs> what she used to live here, uh, yes, indeed, she, uh, we, we, I mean, she, you know, because of her children, her twin, uh, her twin children, the boy and the girl, um, um, the, the, the place had become too small for her. And so she moved into a bigger place. Really? Show me where it is. Where is it? Oh, I will show you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, take a taxi. Are you driving? It says, 
yes sir all right now and take, take the broadway and when you get the broadway look at the street broadway go to the broadway because she doesn't live in a small lane anymore go to the broadway and when you get to the broadway you see a sign that say prosperity avenue now make a right on prosperity avenue and when you get to prosperity avenue look at the number the number seven the number seven is her building the number seven the number the number the number seven the house of perfection and so now you get in your car and you are wondering my god is it true is it true okay i am going to now go and look at look 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 for judith i'm going to go and look for her and so you are driving under you are saying oh, okay all right maybe, maybe the man doesn't know what what he's talking about he, okay so you are driving and and you are going and you are going and so you get to broad way the broad way and so now you see the Broadway. He says, ah, the man told me when I get to Broadway, I should, I should make a right and I'll see Prosperity Avenue. Now, now I made a, I, where is Prosperity Avenue? Where is Prosperity? Now, as you are driving down, my God, the lane, as you are driving down Broad Street, as you are driving down, you realize that the buildings are changing. The, 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 the buildings there are becoming more beautiful. You say, what kind of a neighborhood is this? I mean, this place looks like people who have million dollars. They are the only people that can live here and so now you are going down the lane and you see prosperity avenue you make a rise you are looking for uh, number seven now the first house is glorious the second house is brutal the third house my god is something else the fourth house is a wow the fifth house my god the fifth house you look at that house you say what kind of a house is this now you go to the sixth house you said oh now you are ah, now your eyes got hold of the the seventh house and you said my god my god my god I, I i am really not sure this this girl doesn't have that much money to, to to live in a house like this what kind of a house is this my goodness and I'm, and you are looking at the house and it looks like it is a seven seven garage you know car garage house i mean this house is big this house is huge my god you see the flowers and you see a gate man and this house is a gated community and you see a gate all over the house you are wondering what kind of a house is this now you you, you go and, and 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 you said my god you press the doorbell and nobody is coming you press it the first time the second time the third time now somebody can't it's dressed the person is is dressed and you are saying who are you he says i am the house i, I, I am the garden boy you are the garden boy and you are dressed like this he says yes he says who, who are you looking for mm. who are you looking for i am looking for Edith and I. <laughs> I, I, I i hear this is a house he says, oh, you are looking for madame. Eh, uh, 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 wait one minute. Uh, oh, 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 come on in, come on in. And so you get in there and they take you into a house and, and you sit down and you are looking around. You are looking around and, and all of a sudden you look, you look through the window. You see another house in the house. Oh God, you see another house in the house. And so the first house you saw that you thought that it was Edith's house. You went and you sat down. You can't even sit down. The guy, the, the, the servant is telling you, oh, sit down, sir. sit down, madam. And you, you can't even sit because when you look at the sofa, when you look at the furniture, you said, my God, what is this? And so you are sitting down and you are wondering and you cannot even sit because you, uh, uh, maybe you have got into another, I mean, Edith's house. You are not sure if this is the same person. And so you are sitting down and, and you are wondering, Jesus, my God, I hope, I, I, I hope I didn't, I am not bumping into somebody's house. I hope I am not invading into somebody's privacy. And so now all of a sudden they come and they said, well, the madam want to see you. She want to see me. Is she coming? Oh no. We, we have to take you in a small, in a small van and take you to where she lives. You mean she doesn't live here? Oh, no, 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 she, she doesn't live here. This is just the boys' quarters. 
She doesn't live here. No, 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 no. So they, they put you in, in, in this in this in this small um, van there and, and they are driving you and you see a golf course on the right and you see another golf course on the left and, and, and you see the grass, the grass is, is, is neatly cleaned. My God is 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 groomed very well and you are saying, My God, what is this? Where am I going? Now all of a sudden they said, Oh, okay, now she's here to see you. Now she opens the door and she's coming. And she looks at you and he said, Edith, is that you? He says, Yes, are you sure? Oh my god, what happened to you? You don't look the same, you look more beautiful. You look you look like a rich woman. You said, Yes, I was one I was once, once upon the time. There will always be a once upon the time in your life. Oh, once upon the time I was wretched. I came begging, but nobody will hear me. I came begging, but nobody will give me. I came begging, but nobody will answer but you see i kept seven a god who changes destiny and one day one day one day one day do you know that these people that carried the young man this morning the lord was giving me a deep revelation about these people that carried the young man the only thing they wanted was to be in his life and carry him to bed. <laughs> the only thing they could do, their main agenda, oh, let us be the people that are carrying you to go and beg. They are not carrying the guy, my God, to the place where he will get his total healing and deliverance. If You see, there are people, be careful the people you allow in your life. Because some of the people are there and, and you see, they are there just to make you comfortable in the situation you are in. And so the very moment you make an attempt to get to the top, they will remind you of your past. Oh, I used to know her. She used to be a prostitute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We know her. Yeah. And you know, <clears throat> these people are the people in your life that have demonic information. They have their iPads ready and they have evidence in their heads. <laughs> they claim they have evidence and they are running around with evidence in their heads. But the truth of the matter is that thing that they claim is an evidence is not even the truth. Oh God. And so God is saying, don't worry my daughter. Yet they have evidence in their hands. They claim they have evidence. But my daughter, my son, listen to me. I am the one that reveals the secret. I, I like it. You know, the, the, the Daniel in the Bible. Oh God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. Daniel has a way of calling God. And anytime I read it, something happens to my spirit, man. Daniel calls God the revealer of secret. He's the one that reveals. And so, they are carrying half truth. It's not the whole truth. And they are carrying half truth. Because nobody will the class thinks that you, you are not their class to come and ask you the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. Nobody will come and ask you. Because to them you are a non-entity. Why should I go down to his class to go and ask him? Or to go and ask her what really took place? And so they have half truth in their hands. And they think that they have the trump card. Let me say something to you. It is only Jehovah that have the trump card. Oh God, that is why me, so be a blessing. I will never leave this God because he's the only one that carries the trump card. He's the only one. These people, the only thing they could do was to pick up. Now, when they picked up the man to put him at the gate called beautiful, they did not, their intention was not to put the man there to be healed. <laughs> oh, they only put the man there to beg. Because that was their intention. Let's put him there to beg. 
they did not have it in their mind that we are putting the man there for the man to, to receive his healing. No, healing was not part of their of their of their of their equation. No. Because it is a very good place, uh, you know, for beggars. And um, when, when, when he sits there and he begs, uh, at least, you know, we are the people that carried, oh God, we are the people that carried him. And so when he gets some money, he'll bring us some. <laughs> and so they are feeding on your disability. They know you don't have a husband. They know you don't have a wife. They know you don't have children. And yet, they are feeding on your disability. They said, bring money and I will do it. Bring money and I want to submit to somebody. I know God works miracles. But you see, it is not everything that involves money. It is not everything that involves money. If everything involves money, then Jesus, when he came, the people that were poor and could not give Jesus money, how come Jesus healed them? Because he was the son of God and he was filled with compassion. Where is our compassion? The people took him there not to go and receive his healing. They took him there to go and beg. And at least, if he gets some shillings we will get our portion yep we will get our portion <clears throat> this morning i want to say something to you be careful because it is not everybody that wants you well some people want to see you remain where you are, a beggar. They want to see you remain where you are. You are a beggar. You are begging for your daily bread. You are begging for, for, your, for love. You are begging your husband to love you. You are begging your children to stay with you. You are begging that man to stay with you. You are begging that man not to divorce you. You are begging your boss. And because you have become a beggar, you have become like nothing to that man. But I tell you, the days of begging are over. You are begging people for, your, for their friendship. Love me, be there for me, stand for me, I need you. And so they can capitalize on what you don't have and what you need. And so you are at their mercy. This young lame man, he was at the mercy of the people that carried him. And so, if the people can't carry him, then he's stuck in one geographical location. If the people can't carry him, then he's stuck. And so now, he's depending on the people to carry him. There are so many people in your life and they've put their hands on their chest that she would, she would, I mean, listen, she has nobody. I am the one she depends on. He has nobody. I am the one she depends on. But let me tell you something. You may be a widow. You may be a nobody in the eyes of of society but in God's eyes you are the best in God's eyes you are a king you are a queen you are a princess in God's house you are the head and not the tail in the eyes of God he sees you as his own and he knows how to put you These people saw the lame man as an opportunity to make money. Because if every morning they saw it as a job, because they are going to get paid. Because at the end of the day, when the guy gets some little pennies, 
they are going to get their share. Be careful of the people that claim they are helping you. Yeah. What is their motive for their help? They said they are helping you. What is their motive? Oh, I came to support the ministry. I came to support your life. What is their motive? What motive do they have? They come around you as a friend. What is their motive? In the case of this young man, the people's motive, let us carry him and put him in a particular place. And when he's done begging, we will get our share. Look at something that the, the Lord allowed me to put down. Now, I don't want to be around anybody who is happy. I am going through what I'm going through. You see, there are people who are around you and they are so happy. Oh God, they come to you. Oh, my sister. Hey. Oh, Jehovah Nisi will take care of the problem. Oh, ah, hey, my God, God of Abraham, answer her prayer. Father, answer her prayer. Oh, this is so sad. Hey, this is so sad. Is so sad. It is like witches who have succeeded in killing somebody and they are the first people to go to the funeral. And when they, have, they go to the funeral, they are the people that, you know, will cry. And even when you are telling them, don't cry, my dear. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hey, this is my friend. Oh, this is my friend. This is my bosom friend. Bosom. <laughs> this is my bosom friend. Oh, I love it. Oh, oh death. Death, you are so wicked. You are so wicked. Death, you are so wicked. And you think that they are crying. They are laughing. If the Lord will open your eyes, you will see that they have their teeth. I mean, it's, it's brought this way. And they are laughing. And to you, you think they are crying. Oh, this is my friend. Hey, this is my bosom friend. Oh, she was my friend. She was my everything. Oh, ah, she was my everything. Everything. Oh, you dumb liar. Shut your mouth because you see what you think will never happen to me. Jehovah had made sure. Jehovah. Listen to me, my darling. Sometimes people want to help you so that they can use it against you. Check the motive of your helpers. Some are so genuine. Yes, they are. We have genuine people there that God has positioned them in your life to help you. But there are people that, are, that, that, that draw you closer. There are people that come around you and they say, oh, I'm, I'm, I will help you. They, they are there because the reason why they are there and they claim they are there to help you is because they want to use it against you someday. When God brings you to where he wants you to come to, then they can put their hands and say, ah, if it was not me, he wouldn't have gotten there. <laughs> Peter and John said, why are you people looking on us? As if we did something. We did not do anything. This whole thing came about so that Jesus will be glorified. Where is the glory of Jesus? People are taking glory for themselves. And so the Lord used you to help somebody. Now you want to take the glory for yourself. Oh, you want to go everywhere. And say, let me tell you. That man would have been nobody. If I did not help him. And him. That child would have been no way if I, I did not pick up that child and take that child to school. I paid the child's school fees. Now your hands is on your chest. I paid the child's school fees. I, I. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> oh God, he doesn't know me. He doesn't know me. I paid. Who are you? 
If God see it as a privilege, and these people could have seen it as a privilege, that someday, you know what, we are looking for the better of this young man. And, and, and don't let us just pick him up and put him in the place of beggars. Let us, you know, find a way. Are they healers anywhere? Are there people that are healing? Are, are, are there people, where are the disciples of Jesus? We believe that Jesus left them with some power. Let's take this young man. You see, there were, there were other young men that decided they were so keen on their friend getting the healing that they heard that Jesus was in the house and Jesus was ministering in somebody's house. You know what they did? They went and they uncovered somebody's roof. They wanted their friend to stand on his own two feet and fend for himself. And so these people decided. So there are a couple of people, different kinds of people in the Bible who call themselves helpers. This particular incident here, they picked up the young, the lame man and left him in a particular geographical location. And there was another group of people that had a, a friend that was lame. But they decided they were going to pick up that friend and put that friend in on the mat. And they heard that Jesus was in town. And they said, ah, no, 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 no. We want our friend to be just like us. If you have a friend who is jealous of you, eh, run for your life. If you have a friend that is jealous of you, they want you to remain where you are, a beggar. So that every day, you'll be asking them for arms. Can you give me money for a taxi? Can you give me money for food? Can you give me money to buy underwear? Can you give me money for my children? Can you give me money for brazier? Can you give me money? Can you give me money? Can you give me money? They want you to remain a beggar. And so, every time you can... Come to them and say, give me, so that they will have some kind of power, some kind of authority. And they say, well, you know, and there are some husbands, oh my God, when they see that their wives are rising up, oh, all hell breaks loose. Because, you know what, I am the man. I am supposed to, I, I am supposed to be fending for you. And so every blessed day, come to me. And, 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 and ask arms, come to me, I am your father, I am your auntie, I am your uncle. And so every day come to me and beg. And so when they see that you are standing on your own, instead of them thanking God and says, oh my God, I thank you that father you have blessed this man, you have blessed this woman so that you will not depend on me anymore. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. They are angry that God has lifted you up. They are so angry that God is picking you up and doing something with your life. They wish that they wake up in the morning and see your obituary on the wall and then they can go around and say, didn't I tell you? <laughs> didn't I tell you? I told you. Didn't I tell you? Whoever is saying, didn't I tell you? And their evil wishes, they have satanic wishes. In the name of God, their wishes will never come to pass. Their satanic wishes will never materialize. As long as Jehovah is still sitting on his throne and nobody can dethrone our God, their evil wishes and their counsel will never come to pass. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Jesus that died and rose again, the Jesus that death, there is power. Listen, the, the angel of death has power, but the angel angel of death and death could not have power over the risen Christ. He is the one we have connected ourselves to. The Bible says Christ in us, the hope of glory. Help us. Help us. In the middle of the night, I heard myself singing this song till like 5 a.m. this morning. Abide with me. <laughs> I believe, I, I, I believe that, you know, uh, the, 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 the lame man was, was, sitting, was sitting there and uh, um, people were passing by. 
Do you know that sometimes people who claim to be Christians are nothing but religious folks? <laughs> and so religious folks were passing by and they would just drop shelling plan in the in the in the in the in the bowl and where is your compassion where is your let, let me let, let, let me hold your hand and let me let me stand in agreement with you and they were entering the temple all right they were they were entering into the temple and they knew what prayer was because they were in there to pray. How come nobody stood and, and said, let's agree and let's pray and let's believe God for your healing? It was not done. And so he sees this religious folks. And religious folks are more dangerous than anything. Hey, they are the people who knows how to sing the latest songs. They are the people do, who knows how to quote big scriptures. But they are so deadly and wicked. Huh. Sometimes you wonder. You wonder why they call themselves Christians. Because they are so deadly. They are diabolical. They are so wicked. I mean, their hearts are so wicked. They, oh God. And so, this young man is saying, my God, like yesterday, I didn't have enough money. And uh, these friends who have to carry me, were threatening me, that they will not carry me because yesterday I didn't have enough to give them. <laughs> and so they will not carry me and so I have to beg them beggar I have to beg them for them to pick me up and 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 and, and put me there and so they are they are waiting that today I will get something and so maybe the young man is thinking oh they put me there and they left no they have not left they are standing somewhere I'm looking at the money that people are putting in the chain, in the in the in the bowl for you. They, they, they are counting how many people pass by. <laughs> they are counting. I'm done. We will continue. They are counting how many people pass by and drop them money in the thing. I believe that this boy is saying, Lord, if, if, if there is any God out there, why why I was was I born this way? What happened in my mother's womb? Why, why, why am I, why can't I use my leg like everybody else? Why, 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 why can't I use my leg as everybody else? And I, I, and I can bet you, I can, I can imagine, I can imagine this, this, this young um, limb, uh, uh, you know, crippled man sitting down and lifting up his hands and, uh, and saying, oh, if, if, if there is any God up, up there, if, 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 if there is any, if there is any, any helper out, out, out there, is there any helper out, out there? Is there any helper out there? Is there any helper out there? And I believe that uh, 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 people will come, religious folks will come and drop money, but, uh, but they can't help him. The kind of help he's looking for, they can't give it to him. They can't give it to him. At least some of them can, could have tried, but, but they, they, they don't want to try. They just want to cause him to remain a beggar. And so, they will drop the shilling and it will make noise in the bowl. Other people will hear the noise and they will turn their eyes to look at this beggar who everybody's just putting change. Nothing but their change. The things they don't want is what they give you. And I believe this young, I'm done with you. And I believe this young beggar is sitting there and hearing the change. And he says, I need more than change. That's what I need. I need more than the little change that people are bringing me. I need more. And so this, he can see, he can hear, but he can't walk. Disability. And I believe he has a voice because he screamed and said, arms for the lame. <laughs> I am asking arms. Can somebody give me the, uh, the chain, the thing they don't want? And I believe this young man is sitting there. He says, I need somebody. I need somebody that, um, 
that will do me good. I, 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 I need somebody that will do better than this. And so if there is any God out there, I see you have done it for others. And so in my imagination, he's sitting down. Abide with me. Fast falls the even time. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me. Abide when all the hell let's fail and comfort fear oh help of the help let's hope abide with me oh you are the help of the helpless oh abide with me abide with me it says yeah they they, 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 they they pick me up and they leave me here and they are standing somewhere watching but lord i need somebody to to to, to stay with me i i have a problem but i need help and these people are only giving me change but but lord i need more than the change oh help oh the helpless you are the help of the helpless oh abide with me oh you are the help of the helpless oh abide with me oh jesus you are the help of the helpless oh abide with abide with me they left me here you are the help of the helpless oh abide with abide with me i need more than pennies oh help of the help less oh abide and whilst he's singing the song and say abide with me lord you are the help of the helpless uh, these people cannot there, there, are, there are levels of help uh, they can only help by giving me change but I, I, I think Lord I need more I need more than what, what, what I'm experiencing I just need more and so now God positions Peter and John <laughs> he positions them Haven't they walked that same direction before? Haven't they? Yes, they have. But this particular day, help of the helpless. You are the help of the helpless. You are the one that can help. I have no other person. Who will genuinely help me? You are the help of the helpless. Lord, abide. And Peter and John walking by. They heard the lame man's cry because heaven heard his cry. We'll continue. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, this morning I want to thank you. <sighs> you are the help of the helpless. Help your people. Some are crying uncontrollably because all help have failed them. 
they need your supernatural help. Help, Lord, for the help of man. Vain is the help of man. Vain. But through you, God, we will do valiantly. Vain is the help of man. Help us, Lord. We need your help. This morning, send us helpers. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Now, if you have not given your life to Jesus, I'm done with you. I mean, oh, Jesus, help of the helpless. We'll continue tomorrow by the grace of the living God. If you have not given your life to Jesus, do so. Surrender your life to him. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Be Lord over my life. I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. I bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Now, if you pray this prayer, look for, prayerfully consider, look for a Bible believing church and go to church and give your life totally uh, to Him. <sighs> you are in God's hands. In God's hands, there is security and mercy and health. <laughs> Because those who put their trust in him, he will never fail them. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not. In other words, don't take yourself off and depend on your own strength. Lean not onto your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him and uh, he shall direct your path. Stay in his hands. Don't be in a rush to get out. Outside of God's hands is nothing but pain and tribulation. That's it. Stay in his hands. There is only one place I want to see you, and it's on top. Therefore, connect yourself to the God that can take you to the top and keep you there. You know, human beings can take you to the top and when they feel like it, they can remove the same steps that you climb up, the same ladder. They can remove the ladder. And if God doesn't give his angels charge over you to sustain you when you are coming down, by the time you hit the ground, you become a cripple. <laughs> but when God puts you up on the ladder, no demon in hell. Because he's the one that put you there, he will also be the same one to sustain you with his right hand of power. Connect to God and he will put you to the top and he will allow you, sustain you to be there. I'm done and will continue by the grace of God. I just love you with the love of the living God. I just love with the love of God. And this love is not fake. It's genuine love. I love you. I was so controlled by the Spirit of God. I did not even get the chance to ask you how are you? Your situation is not permanent. Is temporal. The Lord is bringing you to the place of prominence. You will matter. Hear me. You will matter. In the society, the spirit and the anointing of relevance is coming so dangerously on you, you will matter. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful day. Let your day be filled with God's mercy. Let your day be filled with you having a relationship, communication with your Father.
see you. <laughs> when I see you. And the only place I want to see you.